Well, hi, my name is Marvin Lindsay, and I'm the senior pastor of First Presbyterian Church, and I am here today with Rose Warman and with Jessica Macy. They are associated with Services for Independent Living, and uh, Services for Independent Living is an agency that we have a mission partnership with. So part of our uh, mission budget every year supports the, the, uh, the programs and outreach services of Services for Independent Living, because at First Presbyterian Church, we love to partner with local agencies to make a difference uh, in the lives of people in our community. So I just want to turn it over to uh, Rose, who is the development director, and uh, to Jessica, who is the executive director, and uh, just want, want to invite you to say hello and tell us a little bit about Services for Independent Living and uh, the difference that you're making here uh, for people in Columbia, Missouri. Sure. Well, thanks so much for inviting us to talk with everybody today. Um, Services for Independent Living. So I'm Jessica and this is Rose. And uh, we just firmly believe in the idea that people should live as independently with all the choices uh, that they want and disabilities or age or veteran status should not get in the way of that. So the mission of Services for Independent Living is to help people maximize their independence. And we do that through a lot of different programs. A lot of people have probably seen our vans running around town with the Services for Independent Lo Living logo on it. Uh, but we also have a wonderful durable medical recycling program. So if you have a walker or a knee scooter that you don't need anymore, you can bring them to us. We get them cleaned up and back out into the community. And those are the two things we're really well known for, but we have a lot of other programs that are kind of hidden. Uh, we have ex some intensive case management for low-income seniors. Folks who are living on less than $900 a month and trying to make ends meet and be independent and live on their own. We have a lot of volunteer opportunities with that program where people can go and do friendly visiting and grocery shopping. Our grocery shopping need has really spiked as people don't want to get out from the time of COVID. And we have volunteers who do porch drops all the time or go over to the Central Missouri Food Bank Pantry or other pantries in town and pick up food boxes and deliver them back out to folks who need those. Uh, and then we also have services we provide in people's homes. So those are things like personal care. We have attendants who go in and help folks with getting dressed and cleaning their homes, preparing meals, uh, doing a lot of the things that many of us probably find taxing and kind of irritating. But when you have a, a chronic illness or a disability, it can be really challenging. And if somebody doesn't help you with those, you end up in a nursing home. And so we have wonderful nursing facilities in Columbia, but most of us love our homes more than we would love to be in a facility. So our goal is to keep people there. Rose? <laughs> right. Um, and so the great thing about what we're doing is um, we are helping people stay independent in their homes as long as possible. That's good for the community. It provides diversity. We get the benefit of their knowledge and, and so forth. And we're very creative here at SIL. You know, COVID has not kept us down. Jessica has a great imagination and what can we do? And so, um, you know, so many of our folks are, are really the, below the poverty line. We serve above the poverty line, but the vast majority of our folks are below the poverty line. And so not only do they not have a car, most of them can't drive, they use our transportation. And with the COVID, of course, that hasn't, hasn't been as much the case. So what we've done is our drivers are helping keep our building in order and, and safe and clean because of all the extra cleaning that we're having to do. But we also, because we benefit from partnerships, we like to partner. And so we've helped Meals on Wheels and do deliveries. You know, volunteering is down right now for safety. And so to keep our buses going and to keep um, the people, because some of the folks, that's the only real meal of the day they were getting. And so we've helped partner with Meals on Wheels. And we've, um, instead of the consumers going to the food bank, our drivers are going and loading up the boxes and delivering them to the folks. Yes, yeah, so I think our best lesson here at SIL, and probably the best lesson we all have in whatever faith community we're in, is we can't do it alone. And so we really appreciate the help um, of all of the parishioners that you guys have. Uh, we could not do it without the food bank, without Salvation Army, without, I mean, the list is very long. We all know that we have a rich community that supports the people in need. And we're just appreciative to have that, to be a small portion of that and be able to do whatever we can. So if anybody 
uh, out there need some help, give us a call. Um, even if it's not necessarily something we do, we love pointing people in the right direction with our partners. And we have a lot of information on our website and a lot of us are in that generation where we have children and aging parents. And so we're kind of parenting on both sides, <laughs> that sandwich generation. So if that is a challenge for you and you're trying to figure out how to take care of mom and dad in their home or your home, we have resources that can help with that. Uh, yes, I can under, I can sympathize with that a little bit. Uh, we have uh, our oldest uh, son is autistic um, and uh, is has received services for independent living services in the past. Uh, got some training about how to uh, how to use the uh, city bus service so that he could get around and live yes. more independently. So um, that's uh, one small thing. But we are really glad that you're here in the community, and uh, yeah, we uh, I see the SIL bus. Uh, it uh, <laughs> stops uh, a couple of houses up from us uh, five days a week uh, in the morning uh, to pick up one of our neighbors. And we're really uh, grateful for what you're doing to, like you said, help people remain in their homes uh, where they feel comfortable and safe and uh, and want to live, and uh, just increasing people's mobility and also providing for people's basic needs right now while it's yeah. uh, it, it's kind of dicey uh, to get out and about, especially for the population that you're working with. So uh, we're really pleased to be supporting your uh, uh, your services in the community and uh, we'll, we'll stay in touch in the days and weeks and months to come as we uh, navigate this uh, very strange time that we're in. So if there's anything that we can do to be of help to you, uh, let us know. and. Uh, thank you very much for, for what you're doing to make Columbia a better place. You are welcome. We appreciate your support so much. Thank you. Thank you. you All right. Goodbye.